Somewhere in North Africa, troops of the United States Fifth Army are drawn up to honor the ruler of Great Britain, His Majesty King George VI, here on an inspection tour of the Allied Mediterranean Theater of War. Riding in an American scout car, accompanied by Lieutenant General Clark, the King reviews one of the modern mechanized armies the United States is sending abroad. party, including his Minister of War, Sir James Grigg, has lunch in the field as guests of General Clark and Tank Commander Lieutenant General Patton. The meal, prepared and served by mess men of the Engineer Corps, consists of roast beef, corn, peas, apple pie, and coffee. A soldier's fare fit for a king. Not since the historic Roosevelt Churchill meeting in Casablanca have American troops on foreign soil been seen in such an impressive review. personally inspecting American armies in the field, King George pushed on to Tripoli, to Malta, to see the ever-increasing forces of the United Nations gather for new blows to fall upon Nazi-held Europe. The United States cruiser Houston, lost a year ago in the Battle of Java, her fighting spirit still lives in the hearts of her countrymen. Immediately, the city of Houston, Texas, for which the vessel was named, recruited a thousand volunteers to avenge the loss of the vessel. As they took the oath of allegiance, their battle cry was, Remember the Houston! Today, 12 months later, a new cruiser Houston is ready to replace her gallant namesake. A delegation from the city sends the new cruiser down the ways. Another fighting ship to join the United States fleet. time on an Alberta sheep ranch deep in the interior of Western Canada. Flocks by the thousands are raised in this part of the country, and Canadian ranchers have pledged the government a million head for 1943. Beneath the watchful eyes of trained sheepdogs, the ewes and the lambs are brought in from the range for a final feeding before being shipped to market. These famous Rambouillet sheep produce the highest grade wool and mutton in the world. Right now, they're on their way to dinner. Food and clothing on the hoof, destined for United Nations armies in the field. This is A2 one of the bleak, barren Aleutian Islands strung across the North Pacific. Here, 2,000 miles from the United States, 
only 650 miles from Japan, a force of Japanese landed during the early months of the war. Deep within the fastness of snow-clad mountain peaks, behind fog thick enough to ground a seagull, the Japs thought their position impregnable against attack. Today, American forces occupy Attu. How they lived in tent cities in the valley, how they endured the freezing rain and bitter cold of this wild outpost within the shadow of the Arctic Circle is a story of which Americans may well be proud. Here, United States troops emerge from dugouts to blast the last Jap positions in the mountains. They find enemy dead lying in a common grave. Now, American Army cameramen record the final advance up the snow-covered mountainside. In single file, spread out for miles, the United States lines move ahead. artillery hurling shells across the mountain peaks. American wounded are carried back to the base in the valley. Here in a captured Japanese camp, the troops find enemy guns, equipment, left when the Japs fled to the mountains. Beneath rough wooden markers, in a crude, hastily prepared cemetery, lie some of the 2,000 Japanese who fell before the American attack. Thus ends the Japanese invasion of Attu.